Hi there, well I've been having some real fun with Fusion 360 cam software and uh, I've been designing and uh, making some nameplates for my uh, model engines in addition to the nameplates that Olivier originally made me a few years ago and I, I must say um, that CNC engraver that uh, Olivier designed is absolutely fantastic I'm getting some really great results and I'll, I'll, I'll just show you some of the nameplates I've been making This is one of my favourite little engines. She just purrs away. And the Stuart half bean has got really nice gentle motion. This was a job for somebody in the local area. Now what I didn't realise until I uh, started making this video is that I actually completed three internal combustion engines in 2021. Uh, which has amazed me to be honest because I didn't really appreciate that I've done that. and. Uh, I, th I think the favourite engine I've ever made has been the Jerry Howell um, Hit and Miss engine. Really, really good design. And uh, I've decided to have a go at making the Jerry Howell V-Twin. Now this is going to be a, a bit of a difficult project, I think, for me. Um, but I always like, sort of like, pushing the boundaries. Uh, so we'll uh, give it a try. And uh, in this video, I'm going to have a go at... Uh, making the crankcase, or maybe start making the crankcase, I don't know, but we'll uh, see how we get on. So this is what the crankcase looks like, and I'm going to machine it out of this uh, aluminium billet, which is uh, 5 inches in diameter, which is just about right, and it's just under 2.5 inches wide, and this face is close to uh, perpendicular with the edge. This face isn't so. So what I'm going to do is I'll um, put it in a four jaw chuck. I'll first that end off and uh, just skim this edge here because it needs to be close to five inches in diameter. Then I'll reverse it in the four jaw chuck and then I'll uh, skim this edge here again and. Uh, reduce the width down to uh, 2.187 of an inch. When I initially uh, centred this up, um, I centred it on this position here. And then when I moved the gauge out here, it was way off, uh, about, about 20 thou. And uh, the reason for that is the, the part wasn't, there's obviously this face here isn't exactly perpendicular with the sides. So I used my mallet just to tap it out a little bit in certain places. And now I'm, uh, I'm pretty close. So I don't think I can do better than that. So what I'll do now is I'll uh, just sort of like just skim this area here. Um, and then I'll uh, face this end here.
Well that took a while, so uh, what I'll do now is I'll just switch it round in the four jaw chuck and uh, centre it on this uh, edge here and uh, reduce this down to size. Uh, once I've done that I'll get back to you. So I've decided I'm going to uh, cut this down to size using this method. It would have been nice to have used the power feed on the uh, x-axis but uh, I couldn't clamp it correctly so uh, I'm having to do it the hard way. Well, it's taken me all morning to get this down to size and uh, from the drawing I've been able to determine that the hole through here is dead on centre um, which is good so I've put it in the four jaw chuck again and uh, I'm just going to uh, well I've already centre drilled so I'm going to make way, my way up with uh, drill sizes and uh, then I'll uh, use a boring bar So we're 1.967 1 
Well, my target diameter was uh, 2.125 of an inch. I took a few more thou off and I got it down to uh, 2.126, so it's a thou over, so I'm happy with that. And uh, now what I need to do is cut a recess in here. Now the recess needs to be uh, 63 thou deep, so I've set my depth stop to uh, 63 thou. And um, I've positioned the, the uh, tool on the edge here. And uh, it needs to be opened up to 2.26 of an inch. So if I take uh, 2.126 off that, I get 134 thou. Divide 134 thou by two, I get 67 thou, which is equivalent to 1.7 millimeters. So that's one full turn of the dial and 36 increments. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, go in by 10 thou or something like that, and then pull the cross slide out by one full turn and 30 increments and I'll keep on going in until I reach the depth I want once I've done that I'll then withdraw the tool go to the full um, one full turn and 36 increments on the cross slide and then just cut inside hope that makes sense So that should have got it. So the uh, diameter needs to be 2.26. So 2.258, so I'm okay with that. And the depth needs to be uh, 67 thou. No, 63 thou. Perfect. So now I need to create a, a boss on here, which is uh, 2.7 of an inch in diameter. And unfortunately my markings have come off with all that swarf. But if I aim for this mark here, I'm gonna be undersized, so that's, uh, or oversized, whichever it is. Um, so I'll be safe going up to that point. And it needs to be, let me see, 0.219 of an inch deep so I've set my carriage stop at that point so we'll uh, give it a try I'm using a round tool here Seems like an okay method. Going at 10,000 increments. Well, I've got to half of the depth, 
but I've decided I'm going to nibble away until I can get this diameter right. And once I've established the correct diameter, then I can uh, finish off cutting the depth, if that makes sense. So this will be uh, the final cut on the uh, fine feed cross slide. Typical in it, the phone rings at a critical time. <laughs> right, where were we? Well I've cleaned it up with a bit of uh, 600 wet and dry and I'm uh, pretty happy with that result. So what I need to do now is switch it round in the four jaw chuck, centre it up again and uh, repeat a similar process on the other side, albeit the dimensions are just slightly different. But I'll do all that off camera. Well there's a lot of machining gone into this already and I'm uh, still on the first page of over 40 uh, sheets of drawings here. <laughs> Uh, so I'm, I'm not too sure what I've let myself in for. Um, got a couple of little dings on these spaces here, but it doesn't really matter, I don't think, because there's going to be some oil seals going in here. Um, now I've been debating long and hard about my next um, sort of process. Now I was thinking about drilling and tapping these holes, but then if I do that, then I've got to be careful when I establish this baseline here it's got to be all spot on so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to define these lines first of all so I'm going to put this um, on the rotary table on the mill 
and I'm going to use this cutter here to establish this edge here so I'm going to use it to cut down here this is um, let me see 3 eighths of an inch in diameter and that will allow me to slot that in at a later stage it should become clear in terms of my uh, my logic <laughs> um, so once I, so I'm gonna go make a channel in here I don't know how deep but something where it can hold that in reasonably well once I've done that I'm gonna turn the rotary table round to get this angle here and then I'll mill that in the same way and then I'll turn it again and mill it like that in the same way so having established those lines I might then I don't know I might then drill and tap these holes on this side um, we'll have to see I can I can do that using the bolt circle function uh, on the DRO if I need to um, but anyway once once I have established these lines here it'll enable me to take it out of the um, rotary table and then put it on the uh, bolt it to the milling table somehow and I'll be able to establish these lines being sort of like uh, parallel with the base so to do the uh, bottom I can establish that that's sort of horizontal with the base and then do the milling so that's the idea so this rotary table I think it's got an MT2 sort of slot in there so this is an MT2 sort of blank arbor which I turned down the end to 14 millimeters so I've just signed up in that collet chuck and um, just lower the head these are loose at the moment and then just drop it down like that lock it so I know that's on centre now turn the DRO on and uh, just tighten up the the sides zero the DRO and that's the table centered now over the past few years I've uh, collected quite a few different type of adapters for chucks and uh, this is one here uh, for a 125 millimeter three three jaw or four jaw chuck and it's got uh, four T slots in here which match uh, this rotary table so what I'll do is I'll bolt it on there and then bear in mind it's got one of these on so it fits very nicely and um, once I've done that I'll uh, bolt the uh, three jaw chuck on well, I've just put this coaxial indicator on and I've had to uh, adjust the table slightly um, nearly 9 thou on the y axis and uh, nearly 7 thou on the x axis so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a dial gauge in here and uh, then turn the rotary table to make sure that the, the everything is spot on and if it isn't I'll make some uh, more adjustments and as a, a double check uh, I'll just put that on there to show it rotating but I'll rotate it round for 360 degrees So I don't think I can do better than that. Okay, so I've set the rotary table to zero degrees and I've locked the sides. Now the base needs to be 1.68 of an inch from the centre. Now bearing in mind that this is 3 eighths of an inch uh, end mill, I need to add 3 sixteenths onto 1.68. So that gives me 1 
0.8675. So now I need to uh, start cutting the groove. Okay, so I've just moved the table back to uh, zero on the on the uh, y-axis, and uh, that looks okay. Um, so my next cut's going to be along here somewhere, I think, or along here. Um, so I need to. Well, the the, the angle is going to be cut. Um, let me see, one point four seven five of an inch from the centre. So if I add on to that 3 sixteenths, I get um, 1.6625. So I'll move the table 1.6625 first of all. And I need to rotate the table. Let me see. Um, it's going to be up here, isn't it? So I think that's 90 plus 45 degrees, so 135 degrees. Thirty-five. Lock the table. Just to check this. Oops. Well, I've double checked everything, and I, I think it looks okay. We'll just carry on. I just marked it a little bit, took a few thou off. Um, so, carry on. Okay, looking good so far, so what I need to do is to rotate the uh, table uh, another 90 degrees, so that'll be, uh, what are we on now, 135, so that'll be um, 225. Uh, once I've done that, I'll just cut the other one, but I'll do that off camera. Well, hopefully I'll be able to cut these uh, edges off with a bandsaw. Well, my original plan to uh, use this bar inside the groove uh, got superseded a little bit by 
me uh, cutting uh, off uh, a load of stock in the band store. Um, but anyway, I need to make sure it's uh, now parallel with the bed so I can um, just cut that off with a fly cutter or something. Or a shell mill. Looks to be running up a little bit, it's run two thumb out, so uh, I'll adjust it with the uh, mallet and then I'll uh, get on with cutting it. Well, it all seems to be going reasonably to plan, and I mean, using the bandsaw to cut uh, this stock off saved a lot of uh, time and a lot of swarf, and um, it, uh, it's not looking too bad. I uh, drilled and tapped these holes off camera, and uh, I need to do the same on the other side at some point. Um, so I think uh, what I'll do um, in my next video is uh, I'll have marked this up and uh, I'll aim to complete the outside and hopefully I'll be able to uh, mill out the inside as well. Well I thought there'd be too much to cover in one video and I uh, hope I managed to complete it uh, in the next one. But anyway I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you later.